Starboard. Starbound, a game that promised Terraria fans the stars, quite literally, with an expanded universe to explore, creatures to defeat, bosses to destroy, dungeons to conquer, and on and on and on. From what I remember, which admittedly is not much, the game always felt to me like it was still in beta. And to be fair to the game, I think it still was when I stopped playing, so take everything I say about the game with a heavy dose of salt. This game just never clicked for me. So when a member of the community, Kindra, made a custom mod and avatar for the game and asked me to try it, I balked at first. I didn't have fun with the game when I was playing it vanilla, and I'm not sure how adding a challenge to the game would... Oh god. Okay. I guess we're doing it. Firebombs! IN SPACE! So first things first. I have absolutely no idea how what anything is or how anything works. I haven't played this game in years, and even when I did play it, I never got any further than the first boss. So that's good. We load up the game and there we are. Mrs. Lemon, cat girl version, unlimited firebombs in hand. Oh, hey, I can throw them already. That's not good for everyone else. After fiddling with the controls a bunch and figuring out the very important ability to make faces, we waltz through what, I assume, is the story. I think I'm becoming a space cadet or something? I'm not really sure. All I know is that I'm supposed to get a matter manipulator at the ceremony I'm going to, which, for the uninitiated, is an all-in-one tool that can break down everything around me. I get to the ceremony and... Unskippable cutscenes. Ugh. 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 Well, guess the party's over. Let's, uh, l let's go somewhere else. No, don't sit down. What are you doing? Oh, right, I'm a cat. If I fit, I sit. Eventually, I get to the end of the tutorial and make my way to a ship, escaping Earth and starting my journey. Oh, Earth is gone, gone? Damn, that's a thing. Also, Kintra, question. Why, why am I a cat that owns a cat? This is some Mickey Mouse owns Pluto tomfoolery right here. Anyway, our ship's busted and needs repairs. Guess we need to go find... something. Sorry, I, I wasn't reading. But yeah, we're gonna go to the nearest planet in search of repair stuff. Ooh, this looks peaceful. Time to burn it to the ground! Yes! Yes! Yeah! Ah! It burns us! It burns us! So, yeah. Let's talk about what we're working with here. The only method of damage I have here at my disposal is firebombs. Uh, Molotov. They act like you would assume. Hitting an entity deals direct damage, and the fire that spreads from them deals damage over time to anything caught in the flames. From what I can tell, the damage is... Ugh, God damn it. Are firebombs overpowered in every game? Anyway, damage isn't a problem. At least, not at this point in the game. And obviously, quantity isn't a problem either, thanks to Kindra's efforts. The main issue I'm having with this method of play is that I keep setting myself on fire. And, as I just said, the damage is pretty hefty. Making medkits isn't difficult, but it's somewhat jarring to throw a firebomb, then sit around for 5 seconds waiting for the fire to go out, just to bump into another enemy 10 feet past the first one, and have to do it all over again. Or worse, to get rushed by an enemy and throw fire everywhere in a panic, effectively killing us both. No, there's gotta be a better way than this. Let's see what we can do. A little digging into the game's wiki, and it looks like we have two options to avoid getting third degree burns. There's a lot of steps to both methods, though, so I'm just going to write them out real quick, otherwise I'll be going back and forth and making even less sense than I already do. So, method number one, the fire resist augment. In order to take advantage of this doohickey, which would essentially make me fireproof, I'll have to go on a little mining operation, find some iron, make an anvil, then I need to fix my ship, which means beating the first boss, then go to another planet, find tungsten, then build an environmental protection pack, EPP for short, with the anvil. Then I need to find this fire resist augment, randomly, in a chest, and add it to my EPP. Doesn't that sound like a boatload of fun? Method 2 involves much less RNG, and involves making myself some burn resistance spray, which gives me the fireproof condition for 5 minutes. In order to make some SPF 3000, I need to push forward in the story until I get to the first dungeon, beat the first boss, buy an ice fluffalo, that's an ice elemental buffalo, come on, keep up, and milk it for its extract. Ugh. Then we have to build a furnace, upgrade that to its maximum quality, then build an apothecary, upgrade that to max, then combine my buffalo milk with copper bars. Oh, and I'll need to explore level 5 or 6 planets to do any of that last part, and in case you were wondering, the highest tier of planets is 5 and 6. Alright, screw it. We'll figure it out live. Let's get to it. 
We drop down to the first planet and attempt to figure out how to repair our ship. I explore some caves, build what could optimistically be called a base, made some armor for my cat lady, and then got immediately confused about where I was supposed to go. Thankfully, Kendra pointed out that there's a compass in the top right corner. Oh. Well, that's an hour wasted. Anyway, we follow the compass to some ruins, touch the ruins like any self-respecting adventurer would, and are immediately teleported to some sort of space station where we can- Puppy! Who's a good boy? Who's a good boy? Is you? Yes it is. Oh yes it is. We pop around the station, talking to all the NPCs and collecting all the fetch quests, and eventually make our way down to Exposition Grandma. Hello Exposition Grandma, how are you today? This room is too cold and I can't find my teeth. Go save the universe. Are you my grandson? Minutes of unskippable cutscenes later. Ah! Jesus Christ! Kendra, don't do that. As I was saying, Exposition Grandma quests us with finding a guy and repairing our ship. I... were we doing that already? Anyway, we find the guy, and he tells us that we need to go to a mining facility to get the parts we need. Okay, sure, why not? We get to the facility and... oh, oh, I recognize this! This is a dungeon! So, something you should know about Starbound and how it works. There are basically two main modes to the game. Exploration of the entire known universe, and dungeons. If you aren't doing one, you're likely doing the other. Sure, there's a couple odds and ends you can do on the side, such as NPC quests, farming, mining, all that jazz, but as far as the game progress goes, we'll be swapping between the aforementioned main two. This mining facility is the first dungeon, one of seven. If we can beat all seven, we beat the game. Easy as that. The first dungeon is pretty easy, not only because my firebombs can pretty much one-hit KO all the enemies here, but also because I somewhat remember it from beta. Nothing's really changed, so I just kind of plug along. Throw a firebomb, wait a minute, throw a firebomb, get impatient, set myself on fire, repeat ad nauseum. Eventually, though, we get to the Urkius Horror, a crystal with a large eye and a penchant for laser beams. It's fine. The whole trick of this boss is the four buttons stationed around the arena. Run up and press them, then run down to the center where you've charged up a large laser gun. Shoot that, and blammo, 25% of the Horror's health goes away. The lasers try to trip you up a bit, and there's a few minions that spawn in here and there to add to the confusion, but in reality, you can almost nab all four buttons before the lasers even kick on if you're fast enough. A minute or two later, and this boss goes down without a hitch. Easy. We get ourselves whatever it was that fixes our ship down here, and return home. One of seven down. Heading back to Exposition Grandma, she gives me the quest to scan a bunch of objects in the space station. Uh, uh okay. Sure, I'll just go do that. We hop around the station, scanning everything that's green, because green is the only thing that matters, and then take a short break to go mining and get some copper bars so that I can visit the tech lady. Tech lady here puts me through all sorts of puzzles and parkour tests, but gives me some upgrades for my troubles. I can finally dash and double jump. Much better. Wait, what was I doing? Oh shit, grandma! We go back to exposition Grammy, and she tells us that she wants us to use our super scanning powers to scan some objects of one of the main races of this universe. Okay. Sure, why not? But before we do that, I need to struggle with the travel system. Not gonna lie, it took me a little longer than I'd like to admit to figure out that I just needed to right-click on the planet I wanted to travel to. Perks of always using a controller, I guess. Our first target, the plant people, are usually found on forest worlds. So I went to a desert world. Good job, Lemon. No, re really good job. Way to read the quest there, buddy. Luckily, I decided to start mining and found a lot of really good ore along the way, which will let me upgrade my armor. Or it would if I had any cotton. How have I not found cotton plants? I've literally circled two planets. You would think that finally, after another hour or so, I finally found cotton. A single plant of it. Good show. I bring it back to the base, plant it, and then fertilize it with all my hopes and dreams. And now we wait. But while we wait, I go hunting for diamonds and core fragments, and even tunneled all the way to the center of a planet. Whew. That must have taken at least a few in-game days. Surely the plants are- Nope, not done yet. How long do you take? All right, guess we should actually find some plant people. I go to the actual forest world this time, raid a couple of deserted structures, and then finally find some plant people. Hello there, good, uh, plant. How are- Oh no, you're weird. Lonely flowers aside, things are going pretty well. I found a few things I needed to scan, I found a few valuables that weren't nailed down, and- Ow. And I even- Ow. Fuck off, bird. Oh, no, oh god, oh god, I'm sorry. Get out of the fire, get out of the fire! Well, uh, she's okay, I, I think. So hopefully there's no ill will towards me for that little accident. Yay! Yeah, I deserve that. Hopefully killing me once was enough to get it out of their si- Okay, come on now. 
All right, screw it. Salt the earth. Okay, so after scanning all the objects I could find in this completely abandoned village I found, there still wasn't enough objects to fill the bar. Which means I'll have to go to another plant village to raise. I mean explore. After a little online research to make sure I was doing everything correctly, it turns out I am. And I'm also not the only person to gripe about the scan quest either. From what I can gleam, the idea of these scan quests was to encourage players to explore the universe. Which would be fine if these planets were a bit more unique. But we're not here for a review. We're here to beat this game with firebombs. Analysis can come later. Anyway, find the plant people, scan their stuff. Got it. While investigating, I took a short break so that Kendra could pop in and give me some reskin Molotov cocktails. Hey, look, firebombs. Wait, Kendra. Kendra, no. Kendra, no! Wait, that's new. What is that? Why can't I move? Oh no, the world. <laughs> oh no. Help. Help. Ah, there we go, thank god. <laughs> Got stuck. <laughs> oh. Oh, my keyboard died. <laughs> That's what happened. <laughs> oh no, I'm stuck. <laughs> oh shit. So yeah, bought a new keyboard. That's part of the run. You have to do that or else you can't do this run. Take notes. After equipping new hardware, I opened up the mystery door and... Oh god, it's a challenge room. Get away from me. Get away... Wait. What's challenging about this again? Eventually, we return to Gram Gram, and she excitedly alerts us that, somehow, our random scanning of objects has helped her remember where the plant people artifact is located, and shoes us off in the direction of the next dungeon. Dungeon 2 is some sort of competition among the plant folk, where they all compete with one another for the right to hunt this year's target. Unfortunately, they're also biased towards cats, apparently, and all decide that I'm more fun to fight than one another. Shame you're all made of kindling. Between my firebombs and an assortment of traps that I used to my advantage, there's nothing overly difficult leading up to the boss. I did make a friend, though. Well, friend might be too strong a word, but hey, at least she's not actively attempting to murder me, so that's a step up. <laughs> oh, jeez. I've been burned like that for, shit, almost two minutes now. Hey, Nuru, did you know it's 15 degrees cooler in the shade? Me and my newfound acquaintance here eventually make our way to the final chamber where we find the first boss waiting. Exodoom. I, I so... The big spider thing. Nothing difficult to see here. The boss takes minimal damage at best, at least at first, but once you crack his exoskeleton, he burns real good. He does drop a few minions here and there, but they don't stand up very well to all the fire I've been throwing around this entire time, so it's fine. It's at about this time that I found the true boss. My frame rate. Turns out, Terraria, Starbound is not. This game is not very well optimized, and the particle effects eat my potato of a computer alive. Doable, of course, but still not great. Anyway, we've got the artifact that Grandma was looking for, so we give it back to her, and wouldn't you know it, she has another scanning quest for us. Hooray! The next folk are in the ocean. Mm, nope, not doing that. Forget it. Forget it! I'm not a fan of dark water. Too many things hiding in there. Would you look at that? An entire planet of dark water. No, that's fine. This is fine. This is... Oh god, what are you? Now, you'd think I'd be in trouble, what with being a cat, and using fire as my main form of attack. But we've got two things going for us. One, I made an EPP, which gives me water breathing. And two, fire palms are OPAF. The fire may not exist underwater, but getting hit by a glass bottle is still pretty painful. Poor nightmare fish over there never had a chance. After an excruciating underwater walk, we finally find a fish fortress and start scanning everything in sight. Needless to say, we do this for longer than feels necessary, then head back to Exposition Grandma, who then remembers where the fish artifact is, and sends us off to the next dungeon. Are, are you seeing the pattern here? It feels like the main quest might have been an afterthought when this game was put together. Not saying, just saying. Alright, fish dungeon. Let's- Oh boy, bad frame rate. Bad frame rate. Like, glitch you through the elevator and throw you to your death levels of bad. Again, my computer is not good. Not yet, anyway. Reload the dungeon, don't fall off the elevator this time, and make our way into an underwater library of sorts. <laughs> this should go well. There's not a whole lot to say about this dungeon either. Press some buttons, swim through some submerged tunnels, burn some cultists, you know, just another casual Thursday. Eventually, we make it to the boss. You can tell it's the boss because she's monologuing, and because she has a katana. Ow. Ow! Jesus, relax, how the hell do you die? Okay, round two. This time with 90% less panicking. Let's see, she has a gun she shoots downward, sword slashes, sonic spin dashing, and a Dragon Ball Z blast. 
Oh, and a shield, which grants her invulnerability until right after she spins. Oh, okay, it's a pattern. Got it. This is doable. Memorize the pattern, dodge all the attacks, except for this one, which I cannot for the life of me figure out and have to just heal through. Then pepper her with fire bombs until she catches her breath. Repeat five or six times, and voila. Boss number three, down. Um, you, you just gonna ignore the fact that you're on fire, or... We head to the final chamber, open the prize chest that's full of weapons I can't use, steal the fish artifact, and head back to Gramps. Computer? Computer, please. Bird people this time. You know the drill by now. Go to their homes, steal their things, return to Grandma. Remember where the artifact is. Go to Dungeon! Ooh, look at that sunset. And that Chungus. My god, you're a big Chungus. Chungus here wants to give me a tour of the temple, and doesn't want me to touch anything. So, obviously, I touch everything. Nothing happened. Missed opportunity, Starbound. Missed opportunity. Chungus then opens a door, tells me to make my way to the exit through the gift shop, and immediately falls asleep. So obviously, I ignore his advice and head deeper into the temple. Whoa, hello, didn't realize we were playing Mega Man. Question, why do ancient temples always have modern technology in them? Like, I know I'm not the only one that's bothered by this. Can we get an expert to weigh in on this? We head further in, dodge the traps, dodge the guardians, then decide to switch it up a bit and get hit by the traps and the guardians. Wait, no, that, that was a bad idea. Reload the area, dodge the traps, dodge the guardians, press some buttons, get some cosmetics, fail to notice that the challenges are marked on the walls and go for the water like an idiot. Oh god, sharp teeth, sharp teeth! No, 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 no! You know, 75 damage from a single hit might be a sign that we're under-equipped. Let's see what we need to make better armor. Alrighty, we need to make a better furnace, got it. And now with this furnace, we can make better anvils, got it. And with this better anvil, we can now make better armor. Or we could, if we had the ore. Guess we need to find a planet that has the ore we need. Oh, but before we can do that, we need fuel. We could just go buy some, like some common peasant, or we can go mine fuel on the moon. I think we both know which option I went with. Of course, as soon as I declared my intentions to go to the moon, Twitch chat immediately started screaming about a butthole ghost. I'll admit, I dismissed it as the usual antics of the cesspool of scum and villainy that is Twitch chat, but, uh, yep, that's a butthole ghost. With fuel in hand, I found a planet that has the ore I needed, spent some time mining to the center of the earth, got what I needed, and got the hell out. I returned home, tried to make some new digs, found out I'm supposed to be harvesting silk as well as cotton, made a thing that does that, got bored waiting for that to harvest, went to the space station, found out I could get a sprint button, bought said sprint button, and came back to harvest- Oh god damn it! Okay, fine, what else can we do? Um, walls. Walls would be good. Yeah, walls. Okay, now what? Ice Fluffalo? Sure, let's go buy a Fluffalo. There. D do I sit on this? Cats don't lay eggs. Do cats lay eggs? Hey, Carl! Do cats lay eggs? Okay, I'm being told that cats do not, in fact, lay eggs. There's something new today. Well, while we wait for that to hatch, we should probably make sure that we have a pen for the little bugger. There, a fence for- Ah! Look how tiny it is! Oh my god, it's so cute! <coughs> okay, so yeah. We got that going for us now. Oh, the silk's done. Good. Craft that. Craft armor. Wham the bam. No, wait, I'm missing the pants. <sighs> Everything. Everything is like this. And I get it. And it's fine. It's how these games go. But it's a whole lot of waiting. I hate waiting. So what's the last thing I need? The trousers. And that requires canvas. And canvas requires cotton wool. And cotton wool requires cotton. But hey, our buffalo grow while we are fiddling with all that. And he's got a mustache, so that's neat. Also, side note, we can buy canvas from the spaceport. But why would we do that when we can buy more Fluffalo? Okay, fine, I'll go buy some canvas. All right, got the pants. Got my squad of mustachios. Moving on! But wait, no, can't move on, because I just realized that I don't have the best armor. And I want the best armor, so I'm going to go get the best armor. More mining, more burning, more challenge rooms with nothing in them. Here, take every single one of my med kits. Now you have something worthwhile. Oh god, another challenge door. Well, at least this one isn't eating my processor alive like the last one. Easy game for babies. Easy game for babies. Easy game for babies! Alright, what do we got? Upgrade modules, fire resist augment, the dust cracker- Wait a minute! Fire resist augment?! Oh, 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 oh. Finally! I am a god among mortals! All shall burn before the might of- Ah! It hurts! Why does it still hurt?! Oh, it just removes the burn effect, not actual fire damage. Well, I feel lied to. Oh well. At least I don't have to listen to my cat self constantly screaming in agony anymore. I guess that's nice. Anyway, long story short, I found the ore I needed and made some better armor. 
Moving on, for real this time. Back to the Temple of Dechungus. Back through the traps, back past the Guardians, back to the water pit. Actually, no, let's go the other way. Oh no, fire? However will we get past fire? <laughs> I push forward, do some more puzzles and traps, and blah blah blah, we're here. The Kluke's Avatar. It's a statue. Okie dokie. Well, that was easy. Oh, there's a second phase, I was gonna say. Okay, ow. Alright, round two. Not looking forward to... What? A boss that doesn't make me go back through the first phase? Very nice, Starbound. Very nice. This fight's not bad. Dodge the lasers, dodge the ice. Dodge the lava, kill the bird. Simple enough. We steal ourselves another artifact, then head back to Grandma. Who tells us, once again, to go find some clues. Oh, and she gives us a flamethrower. What? Who did... Where were you hiding this? You all know the drill by now. Go scan some stuff. This time, of the monkey folk variety. We eventually find the monkeys hiding in a tundra. Because, you know, monkeys are synonymous with snow. And get the location of the next dungeon. Oh, good. We're part of the resistance now. Rebel scum! Of course, we're the ones that are told to go crawling through the sewers so the rest of the resistance can push forward. Sure, I get it. Pick on the cat because she doesn't have opposable thumbs. I see how it is. The sewers are exactly as you'd expect. You got water, mad scientist, zombie, monkey... Keys, attack drones? Alright then. Oh shit, you're all that's left? Man, irony hurts, doesn't it? Alright, on to Big Ape. This boss. This boss is an actual challenge. Not only is he doing a lot of damage, but it's also a bullet hell. Not exactly a good combination for my computer right now. And yes, I'm going to blame the lag on my terrible aim. Anyway, after a try or five, I realize that each individual drone has its own health bar. And once you finally kill one of them, the others regenerate to full. Oof. We, uh, we need to upgrade our armor again for this to work. My healing items can't keep up. Speaking of healing items, I need to upgrade those too. Turns out, it's not that hard to make better versions of what I've got. You just need a lot of bandages and synthetic material, which I have a goodly number of, and some RNG drops from enemies, which I have far less of. Great. Thankfully, Kendra drops in to give me a helping hand, and gave me a hundred of each. Is this cheating? Yes, absolutely. But this video needs to come out sooner rather than later, and we've obviously proven that we can get these items without issue, so in the interest of keeping things moving, I accept. After a bit of mining on some dangerous planets, I find enough ore to upgrade my forge, make myself some endgame armor that boosts health and defense, and give Big Ape another go. It goes much better. His attacks do a bit less damage now, so panic healing is easier, and slowly but surely, we knock out his drones. Ooh, nice, we've got full Star Fox. Well, my aim never improved, but hey, dying to damage over time is still dying. I'll take it. And this. Alright, last artifact, let's go. This one hangs out in volcano areas. Okay then. Oh good, the robots all think they're cowboys. And they have a sense of morality? Well, we can't have you telling the guards about the fact that I stole the street now, can we? And now I have a hostage. A uh, hostage that almost immediately fell victim to Stockholm Syndrome. Must be the cattail. Before we head out to the second to the last dungeon, I mine a few last bits of ore, making some dead space armor, and head out to see what's waiting for us. Wait a minute. This isn't cowboys. This isn't cowboys at all. Ooh, wizard costume. Okay, Starbound, I forgive you. This dungeon is much more straightforward than the previous ones. You have a castle, the enemy has an entire siege's worth of battalions, have at ye! My firebombs make pretty quick work of the enemies, so it's not too bad. Is that a siege engine? Fine, if you get to use those, I get to have friends. Plant lady, monkey soldier, I choose you! I don't know your names, sorry. Alright, finally, the waves seem to be done. Can I please have- Oh, good, a health bar for the- <laughs> Devs, come on. You had to know that was a bad choice. Literally anything would have been fine. Undead Dragon, Skeletal Dragon, Azranox 2, Electric Boogaloo, literally anything. Dick jokes aside, this boss is a bit rough. Not only do the minions continue to spawn, but the boss itself is pretty resistant to fire, so the only damage I'm really doing is the physical damage of the bombs themselves. I hate to say it, but fire bombs is actually a detriment here. I keep taking fire damage throughout the entire fight since I inevitably light the carpet on fire, and I have to run back and forth to dodge the boss's damage, so it's not like I can just sit at the top of a box. Fluffalo, you're up. I harvest their essence, make an apothecary, upgrade that to a medical station, and make myself some burn-resistant sprays. These lower the damage I take from fire in general, and not just remove the burning debuff, so that should help. Before I dive back into that siege though, let's have a little fun, shall we? Dreadwing, the penguin mini-boss. It's way too easy for what we have, but hey, it's cute, so I'm okay with that. I just hide in a pool of water and throw firebombs, dodging its bullets occasionally. <laughs> it's not like it could really do anything else to hit me at the- Alright, back to the siege. Burn the people, burn the siege engines, and bully the boner dragon. Yoink! One more to go. 
Exposition Grandma gives me some exposition and mentions that she's had the final artifact all along. We plug that in, make a portal, and blue skidoo, we can too. Ah! Oh god! Blue! Blue why? No clue is worth this! So yeah, this entire planet is the dungeon apparently. That's a pretty neat idea. Not a huge fan of the lack of privacy though. Everything is eyes. The ground, the background, the enemies. I eventually decide that we have to go deeper and dig my way to the center of the... Uh, let's blame my computer for that one and try again. Burn the baddies, dig through the eyes, and ride some jelly down to the bottom floor. Brains, huh? I think we're going the right way. Ah, here we go. Final boss room. I can't think of any other way to improve our character, so let's just do this. What the... You? Really? No, 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 no. I've had enough of you. Get out of here. And take your monologuing with you. Oh. 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 All right. The Heart of Ruin. The final boss of the game. And deservedly so. Not only do my firebombs do neither jack nor shit, but they are also very poorly equipped to fight off all the minions this boss constantly spawns. I think I'm hurting myself more than I'm hurting anything else, if I'm being honest. I try to balance my efforts between dealing damage to the heart and removing the adds, but it, uh, does not go well. This boss is absolutely a battle of attrition. A battle I'm losing pretty badly, I might add. My firebomb throwing finger is starting to hurt from how long this fight takes each time, so you know what? It's time for the ultimate strategy. The strategy that has been passed down through my lineage for generations. Hit it! Hit it repeatedly! Hit it till it dies! Oh, shit, that actually worked. Wasn't really expecting that to... Uh, sh should we be getting away from the... And that's how it ends. We did it. We burned the ultimate evil of the universe alive with glass bottles filled with tequila. And to reward me for my efforts, Kendra even made me a trophy. Aww, I love it. Wait, what boys? Ah, I hate it! I hate it! Hey, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks again to Kendra for making my cat wife avatar and unlimited firebombs. Couldn't have done this run without you. Go find her on Twitch, YouTube, and Twitter, and let her know what a great job she did. Links on the screen and in the description. This run was a lot of fun. I'm not entirely on board with Starbound, as I found myself just wanting to play Terraria the entire time I was playing it, but until I play the game the way it's supposed to be played, you know, with like actual weapons and a computer that can handle it, I'll withhold my official opinion. Speaking of actual computers, a much needed shout out to my patrons. Lord Ham, Drum Smasher, Wilhelm, Longith Dave, Jeffrey Zephyr, Kunzio, Albert Plant, and Bazooka Tooth. Thanks to all of you, an actual computer is actually currently underway. I've technically bought all the parts, though I'm still waiting on about 75% of them to either be delivered or get in stock. But I'm hoping that I'll have a semi-functioning computer before the end of May. More like June of 2022. Does anyone have a graphics card they're not using? Also, to show my thanks, it's time for another Patreon raffle. In case you didn't know, every month I spin a wheel to see which one of my lovely patrons gets to choose a form of suffering for me. We've had the Blasphemous review and these two art commissions thus far. Let's see who gets to decide what we do this month. And the winner is... Albert! Good stuff. We'll be in touch. And that's it. Do the YouTube things if you haven't already. Reach out to me through various forms of social media I've acquired. And remember... Uh... Re remember to...